kindly Say. lift up your mic. I, oh, sorry. I normally assume that I have the mic on my throat. Uh, I want to really appreciate that you are always effective on equity, on giving members chances. I was here in the morning, and it is evening. It is past seven. You came and found me here, and you've seen it important that ladies should contribute. I thank you, and I appreciate you for that. Mr. Speaker, I rise to make my contribution on this supplementary budget one. I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that I'm making my contributions based on observations and providing for some gaps which I think need to be looked into when we are still under this budget cycle, so as I am sure I am fully representing Homa Bay County and Kenya as a whole. Mr. Speaker, allow me first to appreciate the Gen Z's and to appreciate this house and to appreciate for the first time President Ruto for having not signed the finance bill. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that I appreciate the Gen Z's for having told us, reminded us that we must take up leadership. Mr. Speaker, I wanted to go on record before I make my contributions, which informs how progressively during this budget cycle I will be supporting based on inclusivity of the budget in terms of projects and developments in the entire 47 counties. Mr. Speaker, we know that the agencies are scored, and I'm speaking to the agencies outside there, that Parliament must take up responsibility. It is not signing, sleeping on the benches, say aye, nay, without listening and critically analyzing. Mr. Speaker, why am I saying that? Even right now, I expect the majority leader to be seated here until the end of this debate, because we are talking on very fundamental issues. Despite us being on Hansard, it is important to take on critically the verbal contribution. I expected the chairman for budget to be sitting here put. I think we should either amend that the budgets who the, the committees presenting issues the majority and minority leaders, they should then speak last so that they sit in this parliament until all the deliberations are done and we make responsive and conclusive things that are informative. Mr. Speaker, I empathize with the families who have fought hard and their friends, relatives and children have shed blood to make Kenya reach the point that we have reached. Mr. Speaker, this informs all of us in the entire nation that leaders must be responsible, must be knowledgeable, and must be ready to listen. We listened as a parliament. And the Gen Z scored on bringing down the finance bill. I am very happy, Mr. Speaker, that technology must also be upscaled by this House. And I'm happy that I sit in the committee for communication, information, and innovation. The reason as to why some of us even sit longer here, Mr. Speaker, before contributing is because the gadgets never work. If we are not able to handle such mere things, the agencies are on X pace. I know we have struggled in this country. Our children have carried stones. The Gen Z simply went technological and brought this country to a standstill. If simple gadgets cannot be managed, what are we going to manage in this house? That is my first concern. This is the fifth time I'm putting it on record that I'm consistently told your name is not reflecting on the screen. Yet on my side, I insert my card at the right time. It is blinking. It confirms that I'm in the house. We must be responsible and correct simple mistakes. Mr. Speaker, I want to note that the meeting that Honorable Milo Diambo was in, I was also a member because those were issues which were tied, touching on child rights, protection, governance, legitimacy, and campaigns, and looking into the budgets that have been put to take care of our children. Mr. Speaker, it was affirmed in that meeting by the agencies who represented, which is true, that systems have collapsed in this nation. 
this issue of psychophancy, the issues of MPs thinking that they are the only ones who have failed this, this nation, we must take it up from the grassroots, Mr. Speaker. How resources are utilized, how budgets are done, how public participation is conducted in all our respective counties must be realistic and to the true cause. Mr. Speaker, on contributing to this budget, I'm informed by calling upon this House, where are we in terms of revenue generation as a country? These things must not be opaque, Mr. Speaker. We, they must be publicized, and they must be given ample time to inform the kind of budgets and appropriation that we need to come out with, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would also want to contribute. It is not only the case of austerity measures, the case of cutting down the current budgets, the case of cutting down development budgets. Grants do come to this country. These things must be made public with a lot of equity, a lot of public participation, and monitoring implementation of grants that come from outside. We are not crying, and we should not be persistent that we cannot keep on borrowing. We, uh, we are under serious debt, yet the money that is locally collected, there is no accountability. Yet the grants that are received by this nation, there is no accountability. Yet the oversight on checking and ascertaining that the projects are distributed equitably is not working. Yet, Mr. Speaker, at the same time, the needs of the people are not effectively taking place. We must differentiate as a house what is theory and what is practical and what affects any part of this nation. Mr. Speaker, I come to the contribution of the budget. I want to start, you asked me very well to tell you and to tell this house, what about Homer Bay? I want to talk about Homer Bay first taking care of the women. There are markets, Mr. Speaker, that you know, the national government confirmed that they were going to build. Konakobodo, Rodi Kopany, Kindu Bay, just to mention a few. Mr. Speaker, I want to advocate that constructing those markets to women without solarized uh, boreholes, without power, we need them to have solar energy so that the women can maximize the time that they spend in the market for their security and to ensure that they are maximizing on the time that they have the pits in the sale. And to that level, I'm advocating that there are so many markets without transformers, without electricity. You cannot separate a woman with water. And so even the 10,000 liters water capacity tank that as a woman representative of Homer Bay County have tried to distribute across to the markets and to the schools of 100, 100 in number are quite inadequate. And so I'm saying that we need an increased, we need to play around with the budget that is existing. We know that even state house funding is still left at 5 billion. I want to say that we can remove one billion there so that we ensure that we have solarized water with boreholes, we have power in our markets, we have the footbridges connecting the agricultural areas to the markets. So I'm really, really advocating that the budget committee needs to look for additional one billion to take care of our markets and our agricultural areas. Mr. Speaker, number two, in as much as we are reducing, and we must work with what Kenyans can afford. We cannot go beyond. Recently, we were, hardly hit, we were hit hard by floods. We need water pumps in Karachuanyo, Wangchien. Families are always displaced. Are we waiting for another flood? I think, Mr. Speaker, this year, or since we got into power, we didn't get, as we, go, we got as, as Emil. Let me correct that. I think this country, needs true and honest spiritual legislation. The evils we have undergone in this country, I'm even worried about this budget. Chakaola debts, the floods, the corona, no implementation, corruption, the ESEC to take charge and do their work. The Senate to take charge and do their work. Let us oversight, let things be done 
from any perspective of any institution, accountability must be done. When I look into this budget, we have different commissions allocated money. We have different state departments allocated the money. We must be hands on. Gone is the time that we have the CSS standing on big vehicles campaigning. Gone is the time we have people swinging with chairs in the offices. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Dr. Phyllis Barto. You know how passionate Dr. Ben Suda is on <laughs> national issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could have donated one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for affording me the opportunity to contribute to this budget. <coughs> uh, Mr. Speaker,